Hi, this is Mr. Max with Sankofa Mathematics. So I'm doing uh, work on binomial theorem. I've prepared about um, 10 or 12 so questions uh, that you can go through. You'll find some of these questions in your textbook Y equals MX plus C um, for grade 12. And then also, if you want a copy of this document, you can go on to onto Google and you can go to these three little apps here and you what you're gonna look for is you're looking for the Google Classroom Google Classroom app and if you're there you probably will see my classes or you'll need a code to go to my classes so I have got grade 12 class with uh, AS level work and the code is this code that you see here SKT3 um, LN4 you can go with that code you can copy it and then you can it will take you to my classes okay so you will also see other material there you will see paper 1 and paper 2 of 2021 that was written by the AS level and quite other material that I have uploaded with uh, the work that we have done so far in class okay you'll also see a copy of the syllabus for the AS level in Namibia all right and uh, so if you want to get a copy of the document then you can just simply download the document or you can then also print out the document okay so you will see that you can download the document and then you'll get exactly the same document that I am now going to discuss as I said there are about 12 questions and they are taken mostly from your textbook. Okay, a quite long question, so this is going to be a very long video. And you also have uh, two questions uh, that I took from the paper that was written um, of the, the grade twelves. So you see, for example, paper one of twenty eleven. This paper that was written, all right, it was written um, last year. This is paper one. You will see that I also two questions from it. The first two questions, question one and also question two. These two questions, I'm also going to explain them towards the end of the video. Okay, or uh, just as a precursor, um, there are certain things that I want you to be familiar with. Maybe I'll just do this. I just want to get to a place. So for this, I expect you to be familiar with for any binomial a plus b raised to the n you should know that the tr plus one term is given by n choose r so this is a way we write it uh, this is a vector form of writing it and then we are going to have b raised to the power of r and then a should be raised to the power of n minus r so we'll be looking at that stuff um, and I hope that you also are familiar with it so far and then what you also need to know obviously is you need to know um, if we have um, say 7 choose 3 how do you calculate this all right so so this can be calculated um, by either you use a calculator all right um, so when you use your calculator you'll see that in your calculator button you have got NPR NCR button here is opposite or on top of the division button so for example what this actually means is you have got 7 factorial over now I hope you are familiar with this 7 minus 3 factorial times 3 factorial okay so this is like 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. I'm going to divide this. Now, this is going to be 4 factorial times 3 factorial. So, I'm just going to um, to clean that up a bit. So, you see, on, what we have on top there is, if you basically have to write it out, you can, let's write it out for now. As again, as I said, you should supposed to be familiar with this work. You were supposed to cover this work already. So that should be divided by 
4 factorial times d factorial. Okay, so from here, again, you can see that the 3 times 2 times 1 goes there once, and it also goes there once. Okay, what else? The 4 cancel here, and 3 times 2 is 6, 6 cancel. So at the end of the day, I'm left with 7 times 5. So this is basically like 35. Okay, all right, another way that I will do this is I see that I have got 7 factorial over 4 factorial coming from here times 3 factorial. So 7 can be written as 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 factorial over 4 factorial times 3 factorial. So the only thing I, I will now do is, well, 4 factorial will cancel, okay? And then I can say, uh, well, you can go ahead and say 7 times 6 times 5 divided by 3. Uh, let's just pull that one up a bit there divided by 3 times 2 times 1, which is 3 factorial. Of course, 3 times 2, again, it's 6. This is just me showing you how not to use a calculator. End of the day, you still get 35. Right, but then you should know how to use a calculator. So what we have is we have got 7. If you hit Shift, and the division button takes you to that 7 chooses, and we said it was um, 7 choose, um, Let's go back there, 7 choose 3, and we're going to go back to our calculator, hit 3, and then you get the same answer, 35. Right, so I hope you're familiar with this kind of stuff, and the other work that you also should know is if you have um, 5 choose 0, right, you should know basically uh, that this is the same as 5 to factorial, then you have 5 minus 0, factorial times 0 factorial, okay? So it's very important that you understand that um, you're going to have 5 factorial over 5 factorial times 1 because you should know that 0 factorial is equal to 1, okay? So at the end of the day, you have got 5 factorial divided by 5 factorial, the answer is going to be 1. So therefore, you have n to 0, you should know the answer is equal to 1. Another one that you probably also should remember is if you have things like 6 choose 6, right? Uh, what does that mean? 6 factorial over 6 minus 6 factorial times 6 factorial. Well, of course, you get 6 factorial over 0 factorial times 6 factorial. Remember, we said 0 factorial is equal to 1, so that is like 6 factorial over 1 times 6 factorial. So this answer is also 1. All right. So um, you should also then realize that n choose n is also 1. We're going to look at those things. Again, I expect you to know this, to already have gone through this as an introduction in your courses. Okay, let's start with what we have here. So we are looking for the first four terms in the expansion 3a plus b all raised to the power of uh, 9. Right, so that brings me to the first term. So the first term will be represented by this. So this is like the first term, okay? The first term will then be 9, which is that 9 over there, choose 0, okay? We're going to look at the first term. Remember I said b should be raised to the power of 9, same power, and then our a. 3a should be raised to the power of, so if that is 0, then it should be 9. Because what we also should know is that these two should exactly add up to 9. Okay? So our first term is going to be, well, if you go 9 choose uh, 0, so perhaps you don't know that, 9 uh, choose 0, well, you're going to see the answer is 1. All right? So you're going to have here, um, that is basically 1 times, I'm just going to do this for this one now, 3 raised to the power of 9, a raised to the power of 9 times 1, because anything b raised to the power of 0 is always going to be 1. So at the end of the day, I'm looking here for 3 raised to the power of 9. And what is that value? So that value should be 3 raised to the power of 9, which is 19,683. So the 
this is 19,683 a raised to the power of 9. All right, so a raised to the power of 9. Okay, so that is the first term. So the second term, um, so the first term was that zero there. So the first term, will, the second term will be 1r plus 1, or you can say 1r. So in this case, now we are looking for one, right? So we are looking for the second term. So the second term will be one plus one. Okay, because remember, it's R plus one. All right, so this is giving me the second term. So the second term is nine, choose one. And then you have got B. Now B powers are increasing. And then you have three A in brackets. And it should be 8. Remember, 8 plus 1 should give me that 9 there. Of course, you can punch it in on your calculator, and then you should get 59,049, and that's A raised to the power of 8, B raised to the power of 1. Okay, you don't actually need to write B raised to the power of 1, okay, but I just wrote that in there, so you can know that that 8 and the other one here will definitely give you 9. So that would be the second term. Right, so the third term, so the third term would be 2 plus 1, so this brings me to the third term, so that's n, choose 2, which is a value, remember, then you have b, should be raised now to that same power of 2, and the 3a, remember, that is 2, plus something, should give you 9, so that should be 7, okay, right. You can go ahead and punch that in. You can say 9 choose 2. Well, you get 36. And then that 36, for example, that 36 should multiply by 3 raised to the power of 7, a raised to the power of 7, b squared. Okay? So at the end of the day, what we are looking at, we are looking at, um, at this value here, which is uh, a very big number, so times, 3 raised to the power of 7. So it's 78,732. 78,732, and that would be a to the power of 7, b squared. All right, so this is the third term. So the fourth term, the fourth term would be, that is the fourth term, right? You see that it gives you the fourth term. The fourth term will be n choose 3, but now, you don't have to write it in that form. You just write it as a vector form, okay? So you can say n choose 3. That is going to be the value of b. It's going to have a 3 now. And the 3a will be, well, that's 9, so that should be 6. All right, so now you go again. 9 choose 3, so n c 3 which gives you 84, and that 84 should be multiplied by 3 raised to the power of 6, so I'm just continuing here. Yeah? So 61,236. 61, that will be a to the power of 6 and b cubed. So the four terms then that we are looking for, the therefore, um, the first four terms that we are looking for of 3a plus b raised to the power of 9 would equal to, I'm just going to write it here, 19,683a raised to the power of 9. The next one will be 59,049a to the power of 8b. And the next one would be, and you also realize they are all being added because you have a plus in the binomial. The next one would be 78,732, a to the 7, b to the power of 2. And the last one would be 61,236, a to the power of 6, b to the power of 3, and so on. So these are the four terms that we were supposed to. Okay, 
Right, so let's go to the second question. They say find in ascending order. You are supposed to find the first four terms in ascending order of x. Now, there is nothing to be afraid of, all right? Again, I'm just going to say 10 to 0. So I know that b value should have a 0, and that 1 should then be raised to the power of 10, because they should give you that, OK? So then the next one would be 10 to 1. And on that b value, now it increases, and then the a value is going to decrease. Then the next one, 10 choose 2. So I'm going to have my b value minus 2x. It's now going to be squared, and 1 will now be raised to the power of 8. Let's see, it goes down 10, 9, 8. And then the next one would be 10 choose 3. I'm going to have minus 2x, which is now going to be cubed, and 1 will be 7, because they should add up to the this should add up to that 10. Can you see that? They should always add up to that 10. And that is how you actually find this uh, pattern. Okay. Right. So it's just time to clean that up a bit. So you can use a calculator. So you will have 1 plus 10 minus 2x. Okay. You'll have plus 45. And then bracket will have 4x squared plus 120, and then bracket will have minus 8x cubed. All right, and so it goes. Right, we can actually clean this up some more so that we can give the final answer. So the final answer would be um, represented by um, 1 minus 20x plus, you get 45 times that, is going to be 180x squared, okay, now I have a minus again, 960x cubed, and so it goes. Okay, right, again, if you want to know how you find this 10 to 45, you know, it's just 10, um, choose 1, 10 choose 1, okay? Right. Um, so let's quickly do 1, so it's a 10, Shift and one, cut that out, go to ten. All right, so that's why you see I have a ten here for example uh, at this particular place. Okay, now what we are looking at is the second one. They are kind of very similar, these two questions, but the other one carries quite a lot of work. So um, if I was to just rewrite the stuff inside as one and I take out the minus two x as a common factor, and I hope you understand. So what I'm going to be left with inside will be one plus two x, all right? Raised to the power of 10. Please um, just make sure that you get, you understand that concept, because it's quite important that you don't mess them up, okay? Right, at the end of the day, if um, I look at my, this is my a value minus b. I'm just going to use that continuously so I don't make mistakes. Because as I said, this is quite a very long problem. Okay, so this is going to be definitely is going to be um, starting with. Um, now I hope you you still recall our answer from before. Okay, so I'm going to have. Um, let's let's start with ten. Zero. Let's start there, okay? And then I said that's my a value, and my b value is represented by this minus two x one plus two x. So that that there represents my b value, and my a value is being represented by that one, and that one should now be raised to the power of ten because they should sum up and give you that ten, as I was saying originally. Okay, so so this whole thing here, all right? Let me just make that nicely. This whole thing here, I'm going to keep on um, bringing that everywhere. Okay, all right. So um, let's do 
let me just do this. So this is my B value. Let's start again. So I'm gonna, I don't want to capture um, that zero there. So I'm just going to move the zero a bit further along. So I'm just gonna move it a bit further because I want to capture this whole, my value of B, all right? My B value, all right. So that B value, I am going to keep on copying it, all right? And um, let's see. Mm -hmm. well, bear with me, technology, I'm gonna copy it and I'm going to paste it. And I'm gonna use it like that many times. All right, so I'm gonna bring it in too. So let me come to my second one, okay? So my second one is going to be plus, I hope you're with me, I am at 10 choose one, right? Remember now, I see it, I'm going to, um, to bring that over. So I'm going to bring this over here. there uh -huh. so I want to bring the view so I'm going to bring that out here just gonna have space for my one and now remember my one Actually, my power is now going to be one. Okay, so my power will be one. So it's now going to be one, right? And my value here was going to be one raised to the power of nine. Because remember, they should add up. They should add up that ten. Same like this one. And that one will add up to that ten. Okay, right. So I'm going to the next one. So I'm going to say again, plus. Now I have. 10 choose 2, all right, so let's just bring in this guy again, so let's, um, uh, it's kind of tricky, well, we can always just delete this one you can also just delete what we have here okay. delete one. and i believe there is one more just stay with me okay i'll go back to correcting that little thing there so i'm gonna have We're running out of space. And then I'm going to take user. Ah. I'm going to bring it here. Right. So what would you have on top here? Well, on top before we, we have removed anything, let me just put my plus back here. And again, this is now supposed to be two. And this one here is supposed to be one raised to the power of eight. Okay, um, just so that we are clear as to what is it that I'm doing. Okay, so um, right, I'm going to go again. Let's just keep on using the correct stuff we are using. In fact, let me have my one is gonna be power seven. Let me go into say plus here. So I'm gonna have plus. Now it's 10 C3. Alright. And again, we are going to paste that in powers. We're gonna bring it here. And the power now, the power is going to be power three, because it must correspond to this one here. And so on. Right, we're gonna clear uh, that up in a bit. 
just want to go back to the previous question um, where we accidentally removed our minus 960x cube. Okay. All right. So now it's just a bit of you cleaning this up. And, and, and there's quite a lot of, of things that needs to be done, okay, when you use your calculator. So you're going to have things like 1 minus 20x, and then you have 1 plus 2x. Then you have plus 180x squared. Then you have um, the 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared is I have multiplied out this binomial, right? The 1 plus 2x squared. And the next one, I'm going to have minus 960x cubed, and I'm going to take that thing, um, cubic function, and if I multiply that, I get 1 plus 16, um, 1 plus 16, right? Let me really just show you where I am getting uh, these values. So I know, for example, that 1 plus 2x squared gives you 1 plus 4x plus 4x squared. That's what is here. Now, if I want to find 1 plus 2x cubed, it's going to be 1 plus 2x multiplied by what I got in my previous answer. Right, so if we quickly multiply that out, because I'm going to write it here, so 1 times 1 is 1, okay, and then you have got 1 times 4x gives you 4x, and then you have 1 times 4x squared. Now you get 2, you got 2, it's going to be 2x, and then you have got 2x times that is 8x squared, and then you got 2x times that is going to be 8x cubed. So at the end of the day, if I clean this up nicely, I'm going to get 1 here. Oops, let's, let's just move our 1 nicely. I'm going to get 1 because that's the only thing. And if I look now at my x, it's 4x plus 2x, which is going to give me 6x. And my square terms of 4x squared plus that is going to give me um, 8x squared plus 4x squared. It's going to give me 12x squared. And then obviously the last one is 8x cubed. All right, so that is um, all that I did there, okay? And obviously that stuff continues, all right? So if you also have a look at the coefficients of my previous answer, and I want you to look here, the coefficients, right? We have got one, that's going to be one. We have the minus 20x, can you see that? You have the plus 180x squared. Then you have the minus 960x cubed. All right. So basically, it's a, it's a matter of it's the same thing. Now I just have to multiply all of that out in, in order for me to end up with um, the solution to the question. Okay. Right. So your algebra should be sound. Don't make mistakes with your signs, because if you make a mistake with your signs, you'll be out. All right, so at the end of the day, you, you should get um, 1 minus 20x minus 40x squared plus 180x squared, that is now when you are multiplying these things over, right? Okay, what you get, what is it that I am doing here? Right, um, then you have plus 720x cube plus 720x to the power of 4 minus 960x cube. I'm here now, then minus 5760x to the power of 4 plus plus plus. I'm not going to continue because it's asking for the or first four terms. So I'm already far as I'm here. So the first four terms will be 1 minus 20x 
plus 140x squared. And remember, the 140x comes from the this two light terms here. And the last one there is going to be minus 240x cubed. Minus 240x cubed. Again, that comes from uh, looking at these two light terms there. All right. So at the end of the day, our solution is this very long statement by Hamilton. Okay, it's a lot of work. It's um, in the beginning, it's sort of trial and error. Okay, so until you get it right. So let's go to question three. Find, they say, expand each of the following using the binomial theorem. So again, it's a long business because we have all, to, all the way to go up to six to six. So I'm just going to start right away. So I'm going to have six to zero. So it's better to write it as a vector form. And my b is b over two raised to zero. And my a is two, and that's going to be six minus zero. I hope you um, are following, okay? Six minus zero plus six choose one. So my b is b over two. Now it's going to be to the power one. And that one will be two, which is now going to be six minus one, okay? Plus six choose two. My b value is b over two. Now it's going to be squared. And the first one here, two will be six minus two. Plus six choose three. My b value is b over two, which is now q. And the two will be six minus three. Plus six choose four. My b value, which is b over two, is now going to be four, and this is going to be six minus four. Plus six choose five. So all of these are values that you can calculate with your calculator. My b value is that, and that is now to the power five. And here I'm going to have the two, which is six minus five. And then the last one is going to be plus six choose six, right? Remember, this is 1, you calculate it, and then you're going to have b over 2 to the 6, and then 2 will be 6 minus 6. Okay, at the end of the day, you should get 64 plus 192 times a half of b plus 240 times b squared upon 4 plus 160 times b b cubed over 8 plus 60 times b to the power of 4 over 16. Not done. Plus 12 times b to the power of 5 over 32 plus 1 times b to the power of 6 over 64. Just remember, you are supposed to use um, fractions. It's better. So if I was to look at uh, how do I get um, just to because I was quite a bit fast there, how do I get um, let's say how do I get this particular value here, the 240 times b squared. Okay, right. So that is one, two, that would be the third term. So the third term should come from this was one, two, three. So it should come from here. Okay. Right. So let us see. Um, it is this business here. So if you want to see how I get to that, so remember, if you use your calculator, you have got you have got six choose two, this one here, right? And that is where you get 15. Now I'm gonna multiply 15 with 2 raised to the power of 4, 2 raised to the power of 4. And you'll see that I get my 240. Okay. And 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 now, in order for you to find this b squared over 2, right? Uh, all squared. So this is very straightforward. You should be able to, to do that. So you have something like b over 2 all squared is b squared over 4. Okay. So that's where this one is coming from. So this would be 2 here. All right. So just was just to show you how I am working out these particular values. And since we are nearly there, now it's just a matter of cleaning um, 
and, and writing things properly. Okay, so at the end of the day, you should have 64, then you should have plus 96b plus 60b squared plus 20b cubed plus, this one becomes a fraction, 15 over 4, b to the power of 4, plus 3 over 8, b to the power of 5, and the last one plus, now this is going to be b to the power of 6 over 64. Okay, and that is how you do the sweet operation. Okay, it's quite a lot of work. Again, spend the following using Pascal's uh, using the binomial theorem. So go back and check where is it that um, you got stuck if you were trying it on your own. Okay, we have another one. Maybe you can pick from this one. Again, you see you have a minus, so the terms will all alternate. One will be positive, negative, positive, negative. All right, so this again should be um, expand the following. So we expect this now to be 4 to 0. Okay, starting all the way there. My b, so a minus b, so my b, right? Remember my b is the 3y, so the minus 3y should be raised to the power of 0. It should be identical with that. And my x should be raised to the power of 4. I'm just going to put 4. You know that these two should give you whatever is on top there. Plus 4, choose 1. So my b is minus 3. Y now it's going to be 1. And my x here should be 3. Plus 4, choose 2. Again, my b is minus 3. Y should be squared. And this x should also be squared to give you that 4. Plus, um, 4 choose 3, again my b is minus 3y, which is cube, and x here should be to the power 1. Plus 4 choose 4, my b is minus 3y raised to the power of 4, and my x should be raised to the power of 0. Okay, right, so just remember, again, this should always add up to that, and uh, the same here, they should add up to that, always. That's one where you can check your story, okay? Uh, if there's something else that you should perhaps also notice is that um, this power, let's use a different maybe numeric group, the power of 3 here should be identical to the power of The power of 4 there should be identical to that value of r. Okay, now that we are there, we can actually clean this up. So this would give, it's going to give me x to the 4 plus 4x cubed times negative 3y plus 6x squared times 9y squared. So just make sure that you get the same values. Plus 4x, then you have minus 27y cubed. Okay, let's just make our cube nicely. cube, I'm running out of space, plus 81 y to the power of 3. Alright, so we can also multiply out those brackets. Eventually, our final solution should be x to the power of 4 minus 12 x cube y plus 54 x squared y squared minus 108 xy cubed plus 81y to the power of 3. You should know that uh, your values here, they should alternate. Um, so if I was to show you, that is a minus, that's a plus, that's a minus, that's a plus, because of the nature of your binomial. Okay, x minus 3. Okay, so that is the lot of work that we carried out, the hard part, if you want to say that. So let's get to answer more exam style questions or things that you should know for the examination. In the expansion of 1 over 2x squared minus x all raised to the power of 9 in descending powers of x, find the sixth term. Now, the best way 
to do this is you must consider that the six term which we know as r plus one should be that's our six terms so or r will be our r should be five that's the first thing that you should notice okay because um six term means what is r r should be something plus one to give you that six so that means we're gonna have we're gonna have we're gonna have nine choose five all right and our b is minus x remember it should be raised to the power of five and our a which is one over two x squared it should now be raised to the power of four because they should give you nine on top of it okay so let's grab our calculator so that means nine choose five choose five nine choose five so that gives you 126 okay so this is 126 times if you clean this up you're gonna get 1 over 16 x raised to the power of 8 okay times x negative x raised to the power of 5 in any case if you clean this all up you're going to get negative um, 63 over 8 okay and that should be multiplied by 1 over x cubed, which gives you negative 63 over 8x cubed as the final answer. So the sixth term will be negative 63 over 8x cubed. That will be the sixth term. Then you are told the term which is independent of x. Now, when you're told the term is independent of x, it means that the coefficient of x is 0. So, we are going to write 9cr because we don't know what our r is. And remember, we had minus x raised to the r and we have um, 1 over 2x squared. So, this should be 9 minus r. All right, so this comes from our general formula that we are supposed to know. Okay, right, so I am looking for values of x, so I'm going to get rid of the constants, so 9cr, because it doesn't help for me to calculate a half of 9 raised to that times 1 over x squared of 9 minus r times negative x to the r. Of course, you should know your laws of indices, okay, when you're dealing with that. So I am avoiding the constant because the constant is not going to tell me anything because I don't know what the value of r is, okay? I want to work with the, um, with the, with the values of x, but I'm just going to write this nicely. 9cr is a half, 9 minus r, and this here could be x raised to the power of negative 2, 9 minus r, times negative x raised to the r. In fact, um, this negative x can also be split, because there's like a, 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 a constant there. So let's just split that one so we can have it also as a constant, which is negative 1 raised to the r and x raised to the r. Okay. So when we are only now focusing on the ones that contain x, okay, and we equate them to, um, that is x raised to the power of negative 2, 9 minus r times x raised to the r, and we equate it to x raised to the power of 0 because we are looking for a term independent of x, that means the coefficient is a constant term, okay? So using the laws of indices here, you're going to have, this is going to be, minus 18 plus 2r, okay, plus r equals to x raised to the power of 0, okay? Remember, when we are multiplying and the bases are the same, we add the indices, okay? So all of that stuff should be added together. So at the end of the day, I can drop the bases, so that's minus 18 plus 3r is equal to 0, 
you will see that this is going to give me the value of r is going to be 18 divided by 3, which means the value of r now uh, is 6. Now that I know that, I can say therefore 9 to 6, okay, is going to be, now I'm looking for uh, the term which is independent, okay, so you can have, you can go back and write the whole sentence, the whole statement that you have here when you were removing everything um, that is this part. You can actually have this part here and you can bring it in if you want to, okay. Um, maybe I can do that. So I'm going to bring all of this. I'm going to have all of that. This is not copying it. I'm just going to paste it down there. So. So we can actually remove this. So this is going to be 9 choose 6 now. So everywhere where I was r i'm going to put in six and my r i'm going to replace it with six the r replace it with eight by six totally up to you how you prefer to work and so that's going to be six that's going to be six as well and then you can go ahead and calculate that stuff okay right so nine choose six so this is going to be 84 times a half raised to the power of 3. And then you have got negative 1 raised to the power of 6. And then you have got x raised to the power of 9 minus 6 is 3, 3 negative 6. And then you have x raised to the power of 6. In fact, if you were to do all of these numbers together here, will have 21 halves, okay? And obviously this is going to give you x raised to the power of zero because minus six plus six, the index is there. So our answer we're looking for is nothing but 21 halves, or you can say 10 to the five. That is the term which is a constant term, which is independent of x. The term containing x to the power of six, so you don't really need to do quite a lot here. So you're just gonna work with what I had before. So the minus 18 plus 3r that I originally equated to zero from when I was looking at my value here. Now they are saying the term is um, containing x to the power six. So I'm simply going to replace that zero by six and find my r. So this will give me that r Will be equal to 8 if you work it out all right so that means if, if i have to work it's 9 choose 8 over 1 over 2x square remember and then this other one was minus x raised to the power of 8 that one will be power of 1 all right so it's just a matter of you now calculating what you're gonna get so you're gonna get 9 half of x raised to the power of 6 if you are to work it out in totality. Question 5. Expand each of the following in ascending orders and ascending powers of b. Well, uh, it is more or less the same what we did before. You can say 4 to 0. Then we have 2 to the power of 4, and our b value, which is minus b, is 3 raised to the power of 0. Plus 4 choose 1, so 2 raised to the power of 3, our b value should now be power 1. Plus 4 choose 2, our b value should have that same 2, and our a value, which is now 2 raised to the power of 2. And uh, plus space there. So 4 choose 3. Our b value which is minus b should be q and our 2 should be 
power 1. Last one, plus 4, choose 4, or B value, which is now to the power 4, and I will choose the power 6. One of the things you should know that these are also going to be terms that are oscillating. One is positive, one is negative. Okay? Um, so when you are calculating all of this, you, you should get to 16 minus 32b plus 24b squared minus 8b cubed plus 60 plus goodness plus b plus b to the power of four okay so that's what that means because this is four choose four is one one times two raised to the power of zero is one so it's just anything uh, raised to even index is always going to be positive okay all right so this is the answer for that then they want something similar and they are saying you should also um, expand each of the following in uh, sending powers of b so we're going to do exactly what we did in the previous one so we're going to go and say all right so it's four choose zero now b is two b so it will now zero our a is one to the power four plus some people don't write this because they know it's just going to be one four choose one then you have two b now it has to be one now one has to be three plus four choose two. Our b is minus two b, which now is going to be squared. Now one also will be squared. Plus four choose three. Our b which is minus our b is always positive two. Now so why did I say in this case here yeah, it's minus? But right. So our b is positive two b. Now it should be cubed and our one should last one 4 choose 4 our 2b should now be to the power of 4 and now 1 should be to the power of 0 okay right so it's just a matter of cleaning that up and working it out and calculating and see what you're getting so you should get 1 plus 8b plus 24b squared plus 32b cubed plus 16b to the power of 4 this is what I'm expecting to get. All right, so we have got our answer for part A. We also have our answer for part B. Part C, they say, you should find the coefficient of B cubed. All right, so when you have something like this, I'm just going to write 2 minus B raised to the power of 4, 1 plus 2B raised to the power of 4. It's actually, if I take the, the 2 minus for the stuff that I worked out in part A, in part A, which was um, this stuff here. So I worked out this stuff. Oh my goodness. Not gonna come out so nicely. Let's see. Um, so this stuff here. Well, it's a little bit, let me just put it under. And I was to multiply that. So if I was to multiply this with what I got in part B as an answer, in part B's answer, well, I will just try to write it smaller. Okay, it was 1 plus 8B plus 24B squared plus 32b cubed plus 16b to the power of 4. So we are looking for one that contain that, the coefficient of b cubed. So you have to now look and see what should you multiply that can give you b cubed. So for example, if I take 16 and I multiply this 16 by this amount, I'm going to get something b cubed there. So, so if I say 16 times um, 32, this will give me 512. So I'm getting 512b 
12 BQ. Let's look for another one where we can get a BQ. What if we take the 24B and we multiply that 24B with 24B squared? Can you see that? So the 24B, hmm, uh, that was my part A, I think, 16 minus 32B plus 24, okay. So in my uh, regional assessment, what I did is, this one is supposed to be B squared. And that's supposed to be Q. So the way I copied it was wrong. Okay, so that one doesn't go nicely with that. So let's look for another one where we can get a BQ. So let's take the 24B square. And we multiply it with 8B. That is also going to give us something. So 24 times 8. Well, that's going to give you 192. So it's positive 192B cubed. Um, is there perhaps another? Well, there's this minus 32. This minus 32B. If you multiply that minus 32B all the way with this one here. Okay. Mm. You're also going to get 100 and 92b cubed. Then there's one more. There's this 8b cubed. Well, if you just simply multiply it by 1, it's going to give you minus 8b cubed. So when you clean this up, you are going to get minus 72 um, as the answer. So minus 72 is the coefficient efficient of B cubed. All right. So you had to choose there which ones are you going to use. Wow, that was an interesting question. So we are now at question six. Find the coefficient of X. Well, again, you can find that by saying first, um, let's change this. So the coefficient of x, you can say, well, that is going to be 7 choose r. My value of b is 2 over x squared. That should be the value of r. And my value of a is x. My x will be 7 minus r. So the objective is for us to find um, coefficient of x, that means x raised to the power of 1. So, um, again, let me just have the constant, remove the constant from there. So, 7 choose r is x raised to the power of 7 minus r times um, 1 over x square to the r times 2 raised to the r, if you, if you were to split that. Okay? If I had to continue, this is going to be 7 choose r and I have got x raised to the 7 minus r times x raised to the negative 2 to the r times 2 raised to the r. So I'm not going to work with the constant because it's going to tell me anything there. I want to um, find the coefficient of x. So in order for us to find the coefficient of x, I'm going to take x, x raised to 7 minus r times x raised to the negative 2r should equal to x raised to the power of 0, because they are saying it's uh, the coefficient of not 0, but 1. So I made a mistake, and let's just read what the question says. Coefficient of x, which is x raised to the power of 1. Good. So once we are here, we use the laws of indices, all right? So we are saying we are going to add the indices, and um, you can drop the basis. Right? So you're going to have 7 minus r minus 2r equals to 1. So that's 7 minus 3r equals 1. That's minus 3r equals 2 minus 6. If you take that 7 over, all right? So this gives us r equals to 6 divided by 3. r should be a positive number. Remember that. Always positive. Right. So we are looking for the coefficient of x which means I don't have to substitute it into um, 
into the values of x, I can actually just substitute the coefficient here and here because I'm looking for the constant. Because if I do substitute it here, that r and the x is going to give me x raised to the power of 1. So that means I can say that 7 choose 2 is the same as 2 squared. Okay? And, and of course, you can use a calculator again. So 7 choose 2 times 4. Is 84. So the answer is 84. And therefore, the coefficient of x or the, the coefficient of x to the power 1 is 84. The question is asking for us to find the coefficient, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. So there are many ways that you can address this question. B, they say find the coefficient of x to the 9 in that expansion. Well, there's a little bit of um, interesting things happening here. That's my A, that's my B to the N. Okay, so I would suggest that you find the R, R plus 1 term, which means you say 8, choose R is equal to, now my B value is negative 1 over 2 over X squared, rather, this value here, negative 1 over X squared. That's going to go to the power r, and my a value is 2x cubed, and that will be 8 minus r. Okay, right, so we can actually clean this up. Take out the constants, a choose r, it's going to be 2, that's going to be 8 minus r, and then you have what x cubed, 8 minus r, and then you have minus 1 r. And then you have 1 over x squared to the r. You can still continue and clean this up. So I'm going to have 8, choose r. Okay. So there's nothing here you can do. You can't work out anything. Um, I'm going to have the other constant here as well, next to it. And then here I'm going to have x. Then you've got 8 minus r. And here you have x is to negative 2 r. Okay, so for the, um, well, people can still go on. I just want to make sure of something because um, the independent of x raised to the 9. Okay, so once we are here now, um, there is a 3 that I left out here. Okay, okay. So we can further clean it out if you want to. And you can say um, for the term in x to 9, we equate, excuse the handwriting, um, x cube 8 minus r times x raised to the negative 2 r, oh, that bracket looks horrible, we equate it to x raised to the power of 9. Now from here on, we can just um, clean up this business, and if you clean up this business, you're going to get x raised to the power of 24 minus 3r, times x raised to negative 2r equals to x raised to the power of 9. So that is like 24 minus 5r equals to 9, if you were to equate the indices. Okay? Hope you still remember how that business worked. Okay? So this is going to eventually give you the value of r to equal to b. You have to calculate that. Right. So now we know what the value of r is, again, uh, I'm not interested in substituting the whole thing. I'm just into the constant there because the question wants me to find the uh, coefficient. So I'm just going to say 8 choose 3. And that was 2 raised to the power. And I'm going to have 8 minus 3. Okay. My constant. Right. Um, the other one was negative 1. The other constant is negative 1. So 
times negative 1 raised to the power of 3. So that's going to give me um, the coefficient that I'm interested in. I'm not interested in the, in the other stuff. So 8 choose 3 times 2 raised to the power of 5 times negative 1. Ooh. End of the day, minus 1,792. Minus 1,792. All right? Therefore, the question asks, we are supposed to find the coefficient of x next to the 9. All right? Therefore, the coefficient of x to the power 9 is negative. All right? is negative 1792. Okay, then part 6 or part C, it says find the coefficient of x squared uh, in that expression. So the hint here that you can perhaps work with, maybe you can uh, apply this hint in the second bracket, this bracket here. In the second bracket, okay. Um, only work out because we are looking for a coefficient of x squared. The x squared term, and perhaps also, and the constant term, because somewhere we are going to multiply with one plus x squared in order for us to see, you know, or constant. That is um, something that you can look at. Okay, so what does that entail? So we're going to start again. The um, r plus 1 term of, now I'm taking um, x over 2 minus 4 over x to the power 6. All right, so we are going to say, so I'm going to say, um, 6 choose r, then I have got, remember, um, the b term is minus 4 over x raised to the r, and the a1 is x over 2 raised to 6 minus r, okay, if uh, you follow. And then I've, I've got... Um, I can actually play around and remove the constants. Yeah? So uh, it's 6 choose r. So I have a half. 6 minus r. I have negative 4 to the r. And I have x, 6 minus r. And then I have 1 over x. 1 over x raised to the r. Okay, right, we can still clean up um, a little bit. So it's 6 choose r. That's a half. 6 minus r. Nothing I can do with this constant here. So this is going to be x. Now, if you look at this one, it's going to be x. That's 6 minus r. And this is negative. You know, it is x raised to the power of negative r. At the end of the day, this gives me 6 choose r, a half raised to 6 minus r, negative 4 to the r. And this is x. If you were to add the indices, that's what you're going to get. So for the term in x squared, we equate x to the power 6 minus 2r equals to x to the power 2. Taking the indices, that's going to give you something like that. So 2 minus 6, so r is equal to 2. Right, so it's important to perhaps highlight the following. 
because I'm not going to repeat uh, that part because we've already done that. So this part that I'm equating to that, so I'm also going to use that same part and I'm going to equate it to find for the uh, constant term. Okay, all right. So I can actually work out and calculate this value. So therefore, you know, six choose two is going to be, well, we can have um, x over two, which was six minus two and minus four over x to that power. Of course, this is gonna give you 15 x squared. Okay, so that's the coefficient of, of the term x squared. So we do the same, we're gonna take for the term in x to the power of zero, constant term, we equate x six minus two r equals to x x to the power of zero. Right, equating the indices, that gives you x to give you six minus two r is equal to zero and r will equal to three. So once you have the value of r, which is three, we're gonna say for the term in x raised to the power of zero, this is the constant term we equate, and we equate, we already have that part of the information. So um, we can actually just work it out, okay? So let's just work it out, because we already have our answers. So six, six choose three, if you can still remember, it was x over two, and six minus three, and minus four over x, squared. Okay, and that squared part, power three. You get it. If you work this out, you will get minus 160. That's what you're going to get. Obviously x to the zero, but just minus 160. Now, so what do we have now? We know that one plus x squared times x over 2 minus 4 over x to the 6 power is the same thing as 1 plus x squared, but we are going to times this because we already know what the squared term was, was 15x squared minus 160, which was that one there. All right, so we are looking at the coefficient of x squared, what would that be? So let us just see, if you multiply one times that, of course that's gonna give you 15x squared. And if you multiply that times that, that's gonna give you minus 160x squared. So that means if you add those two, you get minus 145x squared. So therefore, The coefficient of minus 145 x squared is minus 145. And that is the solution that we are looking for. Okay, it's quite a lot of work, but you have the luxury of pausing and going back and see how. Question seven, in the expansion of x plus two k raised to the seven, where k is a, and this is very important, a non-zero constant. So it means you probably are going to get two values of k or, and one you have to disregard if that is the case. The coefficient of x to the fourth and x to the power five are equal, find the value of k. So we do the same step. You say r plus one term, that is going to be seven choose r. So you're gonna have your b value, which is now two k to the r 
and your a value is x, which will be 7 minus r. Okay, now well, you can actually um, clean this up if you, if you would like to, but you already have what I need, so I'll just say for the x to the fourth, X to the fourth for the x to the fourth term, uh, we can equate um, x seven minus r because the other one is just two k is a constant. We can ignore them. Minus r equals to x to the fourth. Right. So does the seven minus r equals to four? R will be equal to. That is, if you want to work out now what that coefficient will be, that means you are going to have 7 choose 3, okay, um, you have got x to the power 7 minus 3, and then you have 2k raised to the power of 3. So eventually this, if you work it out, it will give you 280 k cube x to the power of 4. All right, so we were interested in that coefficient, so this is what we are going to use. We're going to equate it with the other one. In the same vein, you can say for the x to the fourth term, we equate, and again, we just use x, well, just use x7 minus r equals to x to the power 5. So that's 7 minus r equals to 5. So that means r here will equal to 2. So that is r is equal to 2. So that means 7 choose 2 will be x, which was, um, uh, remember, our b value. Um, it's 2k, so it's 2k squared, so this is going to be 7 minus 2, okay. And if you work this one out, you are going to get, um, if you work this one out, of course, use your calculator so you don't make mistakes, you get 84k squared x to the power 5. Again, I'm just interested in that. So they are saying the coefficients are equal. So if they are saying the coefficients are equal, okay, so if that is the case, then you say 280k cubed is equal to 84k squared. Well, there are many ways you can do this. Um, you can also let it equal to zero, and then you factor out, okay? Right, if you factor out here, you get 14k square, and then in brackets we'll have 20k minus 6 is equal to 0. So 14k square equals to 0, or 20k minus 6 equals to 0. Well, in this particular one we are not going to accept because k is equal to 0, so this answer is invalid, and the reason is we are looking, we are not looking for a non zero constant. No? Question said k is a non-zero. So solving this here means 20k equals to 6 and then k will be 6 divided by 20 which is the same as 3 by 10. Alright, so at the end of the day um, you should get to this answer here and there are many ways that you can get to that answer. Right. So that brings me to question eight. Find the coefficient of x cubed in that expansion. Again, same thing. So you are going to say the r plus one term. So that's going to be seven choose r. And that my b is minus a half of x r. And my a is two seven minus r. Okay, right. So this then gives me seven choose r. And then I have 
2 raised to 7 minus r and negative a half to the r and x to the r. So I'm not interested in those in those constant terms because there's nothing I can do with them at this moment. So I'm going to say that x cubed equals to x to the power r. Okay, put that on the graph. Right. So therefore, that means that r is equal to 3. So if that is the case, I can work it out. So I choose 3, because we're looking for the coefficient. So it's 2, 7 minus 3, negative a half, 3. Okay. And if you work it out, and then obviously x. So once you clean all of this up, you are going to get minus 70 x cubed. And then you can go ahead and answer the question. And the question is, um, the coefficient of x cubed is minus 7. OK. Right, let's go on to question 9. Now this question 9 and question 10 are quite long, so we must let be careful. So once we're dealing with this question, you should remember the following. You should remember that n choose 0 is equal to 1. We spoke about this in the beginning. n choose 1 is going to be nothing but n. Okay, if you want to work it out, it means n factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial. Well, ultimately, this means n times n minus 1 factorial over n minus 1 factorial times 1 factorial. Right, so if you um, were to cancel out this part here, you realize you are only left with n over 1 factorial, which is equal to n. Another one that you should know is n choose 2. Well, if you do the same thing, you should get to write n factorial over, um, you can write it different ways, n minus 2 factorial. Basically, you will get n over 2 eventually. So, yeah, remember that, okay? Uh, I think in your textbook, you can look at page 83, you'll find, um, you'll find this number. So just don't forget. Uh, right, so why is that important? Because we are only going to focus on, for now, I'm going to focus on the one minus 3x raised to the n power. And I want to build the coefficient such a way, okay? So that is n to 0. That means 1 will be here. And a minus 3x is going to be with that 0 there. And this one is n minus 9. So I want to build, okay? Remember also something else. I'm not going to go so far because I am only interested in finding the value of p, which is the coefficient of x squared, okay? And I obviously want to find the value of a and the value of, 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 of n, okay? So I'm going to do this until, let's say, uh, the third term or so. So that's the first term. So the second term, the n choose 1. That's going to be minus 3 x to the power 1. That one is n minus 1. You see that? Um, plus n choose 2, so it's minus 3x. Now this is going to be square. This one will be 1, that's n minus 2. Uh, hope you're following. And that's where I'm going to end with that. Okay, so if I 
if I clean this stuff up, um, or if I bring my a plus x and multiply 1 minus 3x to the n power, which means my a plus x should multiply whatever I got on top there. And what I do when I do work out the stuff on top, I'll get 1 plus n, I've got minus 3x plus n, bracket n minus 1, over 2 times 9x squared. That's what I'm going to get if I work out that stuff. So I'm just going to clean it up a bit. All right. So the way I'm going to clean it up is I'm going to multiply throughout everything here. First, I multiply everything by that a. You with me? So that is going to give me a minus 3, because you see it's a negative, right? Um, Ax, there's also an n. Maybe I write the n first, minus 3, nx, okay? Then if I multiply the 3, comes 3 over 2. You, you'll see that if I multiply the a, then I'm going to get plus a n n minus 1 over 2 that is also being multiplied somehow um, by that 9 x squared. Now that takes care of the a. Uh, I'll clean it up a bit, so I'm going to now use the other one, which is the x. So I'm going to multiply the x times 1, so that's going to be plus x. I hope you are following. And then I'm going to multiply the x with the second one, so that's going to be uh, minus 3nx squared. And I don't have to continue. I don't have to multiply this one here because I'm going to get x cubes and I'm not really interested in x cube okay so I'm gonna end there I'm just going to clean up what I have so far so I have a minus 3 a n x all right then this is going to be plus 4.5 that is like 9 divided by 2 okay a n then n minus 1. Okay, are you with me? And then there was also x squared. Then I have plus x minus 3nx squared plus dot dot dot. Alright, so let's just group them with the coefficients. So, what does that mean? So, the first one is a. Then I'm going to say plus. In here I'm going to put minus 3an. So I'm taking the coefficient of x, right, plus 1. So that's the coefficient of x. Now I'm going to take the coefficient of, um, Of the x square it means I'm going to take this four point blah 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 and this one here but I'm going to group them together so I'm going to say let's change this just back to English and I'm going to say plus and I'm going to do the same thing put them in square bracket 4.5 a n n minus 1 minus 3 n and all of this the coefficient is x squared plus dot dot dot. Well, this story should equal to. Let me just uh, clean this up. This should equal to. This should equal to what we were told in the beginning: four minus nine, five x. 
plus p x raised to the power of 2, and so on and so on. So I'm going to equate the coefficients, all right? In order for me to find what is my a, what is my b. Well, so a is quite straightforward. a is equal to 4. So a equals to 4. That takes care of that. Minus 3an plus 1 is equal to minus 95. I hope you get it. I'm equating this stuff here with the minus 95 that I have over there. Okay? I hope you're getting it. And uh, I can actually work this out if I want to. So this is minus 3, and I know what a is 4, and then plus 1 should give me minus 95. So we can work this out. So that's minus 12. n plus 1 equals to minus 95. Minus 12 n equals to minus 96. This should imply that n is minus 96 divided by minus, well, divided by negative 12. And therefore, our value of n is 8. Now we can find our value of p by taking the coefficients, the 4, This technology. So I take 4.5 a n n minus 1 minus 3 n. I let it equal to p. But 4.5 a n. We know that the value of a is 4. We know that the value of n is 8. Then We then can say the value of n is 8 and the value of n is 8. So we can clean all of that up. You will see that p equals to 984. So what does that mean? Therefore, a equals to 4 n equals to 8, and p equals to 984. Hmm. It was quite something. Right, I have a similar question, 10, very long one, but we'll get to the bottom of that question as well. Again, um, this question, I'll say that again, remember, uh, n choose 0 is equal to 1, n choose 1 is equal to n, and n choose 2, well that is equal to, you can work it out, n minus 1 all upon 2. Very important. Why is that important? Because I'm going to take the 1, the second bracket, right? The 1 minus x upon 2n, and I'm going to do that. So when I have n choose 0, my b is negative x over 2, that should be 0, my a is 1, so it will be n minus 0, plus n choose 1, my b is negative x over 2, now it's to power 1, and 1 should be n minus 1, plus, running out of space, I'm going to have n choose 3, not 3 but 2, it's too fast. So my b is negative x over 2, 2, and 1 should be n minus 2. Okay, I think that's up to where we will go, as far as that is concerned. So what does it all mean? It therefore now means, and maybe something else also worth noting, um, a plus x 
all square is nothing but a square plus 2ax plus x square. So I'm going to write it like that. Okay. So when I have um, a plus x squared times you know, 1 minus x over 2 to the n, I am going to say, well, it is that a square plus 2ax plus x square that I have, right? And I'm going to multiply with all the stuff that I worked out. Now, the stuff that I worked out, it's 1 minus nx over 2 plus we have n minus n minus 1 over 8x square and so on and so on. Now, we have to do your multiplication. But remember, we are looking for um, the possible values of A, N, and Q. Q is where you have um, all of this stuff, by the way, should equal to you know, what we're going to calculate right now. So, in fact, um, you should be very careful when you're multiplying. So I'm going to multiply this one each thing in there and uh, it gives me a square minus if I do that a square n x over 2 plus a square n n minus 1 over 8 x square and now I'm getting to the other one I'm going to use the 2 a x and the 2ax, I'm going to multiply with 1. So it's plus 2ax. And then I'm going to multiply that also with this one here. So that's going to be minus. Now the 2s, they cancel. So it's a n x squared. a n x squared. All right. And then I'm going to have another one that I am going to do. And that is I'm going to multiply, there's no need for me to multiply this with the other one. It's going to give me x to the power 4. But I can see I can get an x square. And that x square comes from, if I multiply this x square here with that one. So I'm going to get plus x square. Remember, the objective is to get all the terms of x square. All right. So eventually now, if I am looking at the coefficients, so um, I'm going to write it as a square, and I'm going to take plus, right? So I'm going to take the coefficient of a, uh, of x. That means um, if I have to highlight, I'm looking at this 2a, and I'm looking at all of this business here, because we have got an x as a coefficient. And uh, that's the only one that I can see. So I'm going to write that as 2a minus a square n over 2. And this is the coefficient of x. Plus, I'm going to bring in another one. So I'm going to use the coefficient of x square. The coefficient of x square is... I'm going to take the positive one first. A square n, n minus 1 over 8 minus a n plus 1. All of these are the coefficients of x square. Okay? So I was now looking at... Um, this whole stuff here, this one here, and that little one that is in front there. Okay. Okay. Right. So don't forget, all of this, I don't have space, should equal to 16 minus 40x plus qx squared. That's what it should equal to. So in one line. All right. So I can actually now take and I can equate my
coefficients. So that means, you must be careful here, a square equals to 16. And here's the thing about a now, because it's square root, so a will have two values, which means now I have to consider if a is positive, okay, then 2a minus a square n over 2 should equal to minus 40. That is if I equate the ones of the coefficients of that. Well, so let us just go ahead and see what this all gives us. No? So this is going to be 2 times 4 minus 4 squared n over 2 equals to negative 40. Well, if you clean this up, okay, if you clean this up, you are going to get an interesting thing. You're going to get 8 minus 8n is equal to negative 40. So minus 8n equals to minus 48. Therefore, n, oh, that n looks horrible. Therefore, n is equal to 6. This is if this is if a is equal to 4, okay? Then n is equal to 6. When I'm done, we are also supposed to find the uh, q value. So if I find the q value, and here's the thing about q, is the one of the x squared. So q, if I have to write it under here, is a square n, n minus 1 over 8, minus a uh, n, okay, so a n, I'm getting it all from here, ne? plus 1, it should equal to q, should equal to q. Right, let's see if we can do that on the other slide. So I'm going to have a square n, n minus 1 over 8, minus a n, plus 1 should equal to q, but we know what is our a value, our if a is 4, and n was 6, all over 8, minus 4 times 6, what will be the value of q? Well, this will give me the value of q if you Work it out, you get 37. Right, so what do we know so far? If A is positive, then N equals to 6, and our Q equals to 37. That's what we know so far. But we are not done. We are now also supposed to take when A is negative 4. So, if a is negative 4, now we need to know what are the other values going to be. Hmm. Well, I'm going to write it. You can scroll back and, and check. So um, that's negative 4 squared n. But this is over 2, which should be equal to negative 40. And if you punch this in, Eventually, you'll be left with negative 8 minus 8n equals to negative 40. The negative 8n equals to negative 32. Then n will equal to 4. At the same vein, we need to find q. And q would be um, equal to negative 4 squared 4 times 4 minus 1, everything over 8, minus negative 4, times 4, plus 1. Well, it is quite a very intriguing thing, but you should get that Q is 41. So, what do we now know? If A equals to negative 4, then N equals to 4, and Q equals to 41. Huh. 
and what is the other one saying? If a equals to 4, n was equal to 6, and q was equal to 37. So this is how this question was supposed to be done. Hmm. It is, as I said, a lot of work and um, take time, and scroll through the stuff, pause the video. Again, it's a very long recording, it's nearly two hours long. All right, question 11, getting to the last parts. Find the first three terms of the expansion. Um, I hope you still remember, 2 plus ax to the power 5, 5 to 0. That's going to be 2 to the power 5, ax to the power of 0, plus 5 choose 1, ax to the power 1. And then 2 to the power 4 plus um, 5 choose 2, that's ax to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3, plus they said the first three terms. Okay, now we don't need to continue there. So eventually, this must give you 32 if you work it out, okay, plus 80 ax plus 80 a square x square. That is what you were supposed to get. Given the coefficient of x square in the expansion is equal to that, so that means um, you are going to say 1 plus 2x, if you multiply it by the stuff that we just got on top there, Okay, if we were to multiply that, we, we will have to find coefficients now of, um, of x square. Right, so again, let us just multiply out, okay? So we're going to have that times that. So that's giving me 32 plus 80ax plus 80a square x square. Now I'm going to go to the second one, that is 2 times that, that's going to be plus 64x, okay, and then I'm going to have that times that one. I'm not even going to continue with the other ones because it comes x to the power 3 and I'm, I'm working with x squared there. So I'm going to multiply this one on loan, which is then 160a this one here, we should just go back to there. 32, 80ax, 80a square, x square plus 64 plus 160a x square. So that is two facts. That is where I'm going to end. Okay? So let me see what do I have. We know the coefficient of x square is 240. So that means we are going to look for coefficients where we can find x squares. We are going to have this one here, and we have got this one here. That is the only coefficients we have for x square. So we're going to say 80 a square plus 160a should be equal to 240. So naturally, this becomes a quadratic equation. So it's 80a squared plus 160a minus 240. Ah, uh, that's minus 240 is equal to zero. Well, you can divide this quadratic equation by 80. And when you do so, you get 8a squared plus 2a minus 3. And this also factorizes if, um, well, this is just 8. This is just 8 squared, not dividing by 80. So this factorizes to, that's a minus, one bracket is positive, one is negative, so it's positive 1 and negative 3. Okay, 
then a plus 1 is equal to 0 or a minus 3 is equal to 0. Uh -huh. uh, this, this, this should be positive 3 and uh, the other one should be negative 1 so that uh, you can make sense when you uh, multiply them. So you have a equals to 1 or a equals to negative 3 and this is the values because the question says find the possible values of a okay um, possible values plural of a okay so that solves that question right so the very last question that i'm doing is the ones that were taken from the question paper. It was written by the AS level students um, last year. So I'm gonna go to that paper. And also I've uploaded the paper into onto the Google Classroom. So you can also download the paper from there. The first three terms in ascending powers of X, well, you just had to say six choose zero. 1 to the 6, now p values minus px to the 0, that's the correspond, plus 6 choose 1, now p values minus px to the 1, and that one is 1 to the 5, okay, plus, we say the first 3, 6 choose 2, our p values minus px to the raised power 2, 1 to the power 4. Okay, well, that is where you end, but of course this needs to continue. Now you can go ahead and work it out. So that would be 1 minus 6px plus 15p square x square. All right, you should also know that they should alternate because you have um, a minus here. So one term will be positive, negative, positive, negative. That is what you were supposed to do. They say given that the coefficient of x squared in the expansion is zero, something similar like what we did before. So if that is the case, I will say one minus x, and then one minus px to the power six means one minus x, and I'm going to use my answer one minus six px plus fifteen p square x square. Right, and I'm going to multiply a bit here because, yeah, this is going to give me 1 minus 6px plus 15p square x square, and that is minus x. Are you following what I'm doing? And then if I multiply that with that one, I'm going to get a positive 6px squared. And that's all where I'm going to end because I'm dealing with x squared terms, so no need to multiply further. Now I'm going to take my, um, just rewrite them nicely for me so I can say that it's 1 plus, so the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x is minus 6p and minus 1. So inside here, I will have minus 6p minus 1. Okay, that's a bracket that doesn't fit there. And this will be the coefficient of x. And the coefficient of x squared is going to be 15p squared plus 6p. Can you see that? That is the coefficient of x squared. Uh -huh. Let's just um, have that square nicely. Right. Plus, so we go on. So, what do we know? We know that um, the coefficient, because we are told of x square is 0. So we're going to say 15p 
p square plus 6p equals to 0. That's all. And we need to solve that. And uh, of course, you can take out common factor. Common factor is 3p. That will be 5p plus 2 equals to 0. Then 3p plus is equal to 0. p is equal to 0. But we are also told um, we are looking for a non-zero value. So we are not going to... Um, so this answer here becomes invalid. So our answer would therefore be 5p plus 2 equals to 0. 5p equals to negative 2, therefore p negative 2.5. So therefore p is negative 2.5. And that is the value that we are considering. Okay, I hope that um, you can use this tape and uh, it helps you with your work on binomial theorems. All right, um, it's a long recording. Go back, make sure that you have captured everything and also that um, if you are forgetting the rules, you can always refer back to this tape. All right, so this is Mr. Max with some government.